Hi, it's Sherry. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And thank you so much for your continued support. Today, I have such a great video in store for you. I recently visited my local Kirkland store and I just love their home decor, but I do not love their prices. But I left there so inspired. I wanted to come home and see if I could duplicate many of the beautiful things that I saw there. In today's video, I will be duping 11 high-end Kirkland items. I have so many great ideas to share with you. So, let's get started. When I saw this floral wood plaque, the petals of the flowers reminded me of the wooden biscuits used in furniture making, so I knew that I wanted to try to replicate this. I mixed together some old blue, gray, and black paints that I had to create the dark navy color of the plaque. I just used an old rustic piece of wood that I had in the garage. Since my plaque was going to be smaller than the Kirkland's one, I just laid out the biscuits in a design that I liked. I created the bottom layer adhering the biscuits using wood glue, and then I let it dry overnight. The next day, I went over it with an orbital sander to sand off the embossed design in the biscuits. To create the second layer of petals, I used two-sided foam adhesive pads and wood glue. I cut the adhesive pads into small squares and attached them to the outer tip of the petal. This allowed the petal to lay flat on the plaque. When a petal went beyond the edge of the plaque, I marked the line of the edge with a pencil on the petal and then cut along that line using my miter shears. When the wood glue was dry, I went over the second layer of petals with the orbital sander to remove that embossed design. Although the Kirkland's plaque is larger, Mine has that rustic charm that you only get from using an old piece of wood. When I saw this wood necklace, I knew this would be an easy dupe. I always buy display stands like this anytime I see them at the thrift store. I started by cutting one ring off of a Dollar Tree wire wreath form. I gathered together some wood sticks that I had. I'm not sure if I got these at Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. I marked down one inch on each of the sticks and then drilled a hole all the way through. I did this to 11 sticks. I then took the largest stick and put it in the middle and then arranged the remaining sticks in descending size on either side of the middle stick. I cut a few sticks with my miter shears to make them a bit shorter. I ran the wire ring through the hole in each of the sticks. And then I played around with some wood beads that I had, creating a little bit of a design on either side of the sticks until I fell on one that I liked. Starting next to one of the beads, I used a little hot glue to attach the end of a ball of twine to the metal ring. I then began wrapping the twine around and around and around the wire ring. When I reached the beads on the opposite side, I cut the twine and glued down the end with a bit of hot glue. I chose not to paint mine gray because I prefer the natural wood tones. I thought these little hanging bud vases were cute, and it would be easy to build the wood frames out of some scrap wood. But I wanted to show you a super easy way to make them using frames from Dollar Tree. The backs of these frames would not pop out easily, and so I had to hammer it out. I marked a center point on the top of each of the frames, and then I drilled a hole large enough to thread twine through. 
I removed the staples that had held the back in place. I bought a package of the little glass bottles at Dollar Tree and tied a piece of twine around the top of each bottle. I then thread the twine through the hole in the frame and tied a knot to hold it in place. I marked the center on the side of each frame to help me in lining them up before I glued them together. I used wood glue and then I used painter's tape to tape the frames together to keep them from moving until the glue had dried. Wood glue takes several hours to fully dry, but it creates a super strong bond. The Kirkland's hanging vases are a little larger than mine, but they're also way more expensive. For the next project, I decided to combine the look of these two vases. I would combine the speckled look of the fat vase and the two-tone look of the tall vase. I taped around an old bottle that I had. Then I applied Mod Podge to the bottom portion of the bottle. I purchased a bag of Epsom salt at Dollar Tree, and then I merely sprinkled this over the Mod Podge, patting it in place and shaking off the excess. I let the Mod Podge dry for about an hour, then I removed the tape. Then I sprayed a clear top coat over the entire bottle. This project only cost one dollar for the bag of Epsom salt. These rope handled vases were going to be another very easy dupe. This rooster pitcher had a small chip that needed to be repaired before I painted it. I just used a bit of repair putty. You do need to work quickly because it dries fairly fast. After just about 15 minutes, you can sand it smooth with some sandpaper. I took the pitcher outside and sprayed it with a couple coats of Zinsser primer. When the primer was dry, I went over it with a satin top coat. I used a little hot glue to adhere the end of a long piece of twine to the underside of the handle. Then I very neatly and tightly continued to wrap the twine around the handle until it was completely covered. I cut the twine and once again I used a little hot glue to hold the end of it in place on the underside of the handle. I really don't know why anyone would pay $60 for a vase that is so easy to replicate. I do love this carved wood sculpture, but there is no way I would pay $280 for it. To create a sturdy stand, I was able to unscrew the top plate of this thrifted candle holder. A dear friend collects driftwood along the river, and she gave me this piece. I hammered in a piece of dowel rod into the hollow end and added wood glue to make sure that it stayed put. Then I drilled a hole the size of the rod on the candlestick holder. I used E6000 to secure it in place. I spray painted the stand black, which I should have done at the very start. I like the Kirkland sculpture better, but mine is so much cheaper. I thought this wood pedestal bowl would be a simple and easy project, but it ended up taking much more time than I anticipated. I didn't have a short wood candle stand, and so I used this ceramic one instead. Turning it upside down, I inserted a piece of curtain rod that I sanded down to fit inside. I drilled a hole through a thrifted salad bowl, and because the wood was not very thick, I attached a washer so the screw would not go all the way through the wood. Then I drilled a pilot hole in the curtain rod, applied E6000 glue, and then attached the two pieces together using a screw. This next step was unnecessary, but I rolled out some repair putty to fill in the small gap between the base and the wood bowl. 
I also used some putty to cover the washer and the screw on the inside. I spray painted the ceramic base with a bonding primer. I sanded down over the dried putty to create a smooth surface. When the primer was dry, I painted the entire piece with two coats of white chalk paint. When I first distressed the piece, I didn't like the green color of the ceramic candle stand showing through, and so I knew that I needed to paint it to match the wood color of the bowl. When the orangey-brown paint was dry, I repainted and distressed the base. I sprayed on a matte top coat to seal and protect the piece. I highly recommend using a wood candlestick for the base if you have one. Here is another ridiculously priced piece of wood sculpture. I found this mask at a thrift store for $5. This wood piece once held round drink coasters. I turned it upside down, marked the center, and drilled a hole the size of my dowel rod. I drilled a second hole in the base of the wood mask. I painted the base and the dowel rod with black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I attached all three pieces together using wood glue. I removed the sawtooth hanger from the back and applied clear wax on the base and the dowel rod, wiping off the excess. I think it turned out pretty cute. I might even like it better than the Kirkland's version. I've always liked these antique looking scales and so I really wanted to see if I could dupe it. I found these two small candle plates in my stash and drilled three holes in each of them. I took the chains off of two Dollar Tree hanging baskets. I attached the chains to the metal trays using a bit of black florist wire. I would adjust the length of the chain once I had the base created. This thrifted candle stand was the size that I needed, and so it saved me from having to build it from scratch. I drilled the top hole a bit larger, just so my dowel rod would fit in snugly. I painted the dowel rod and the base with two coats of black chalk paint. For decorative purposes, I added some beads to the tips of the dowel rods and to the top of the base. I distressed it a bit and then applied a coat of clear wax. I think it's a pretty good match for the price. What do you think? For my next project, I wanted to try to dupe this beaded basket. I didn't have an exact match, so I decided to go with this larger rectangular basket that I had. I took off the handles and set them aside I'll use them in some future project. Rather than purchasing new, I decided to use these darker beads that I already had. I strung them on a long piece of florist wire. Using a large needle and a piece of wire, I began sewing the string of beads to the top of the basket. I would tie off the piece of wire every third or fourth bead. I continued to do this all around the top of the basket until I got back to the start. I removed some extra beads off the end of the strand to create a perfect fit. I went back around the basket with my wire cutters to trim off any little pieces of wire that were sticking out. I think this would be really cute if it was painted white or another color, but for now, I'm just going to leave it natural. The large piece of driftwood that I used earlier in the video was hollow in the middle, and so I decided that I would try to make miniature versions of these wood sculptures. I used a scrap of wood and two wood slices to create the bases for the sculptures. I drilled a hole in the center of each base and at the bottom of each piece of driftwood to fit my dowel rod. 
I assembled all of the pieces and used wood glue to make sure that everything stayed securely in place. I left the wood slices natural, but painted the scrap of wood with two coats of black chalk paint. I added a bird to one wood sculpture and a small nest with yellow beads for bird eggs to another. I took the top transparent layer of some Dollar Tree butterfly stickers and hot glued them to the last piece of driftwood. I think the three pieces make an interesting little sculptural collection. Did you enjoy today's DIY projects? Well, if you did, I hope you'll consider giving this video a thumbs up, or better yet, subscribing if you haven't yet. And as always, I would love to know which project was your favorite. I really enjoy doing these high-end dupes, and I would love suggestions from you if there are other high-end decor items that you would like to see me duplicate in future videos. Well, that's it for today. Until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now.